Hi, I'm Jerry Walker, and my candidate number 6211. This is my evaluation for media. The objective mainly was to uh, incorporate conventions in youth, and uh, but also to deviate from this as well by incorporating thriller and horror aspects. Our remaining unique. Um, so the youth fall was probably the most imperative factor, and uh, we acknowledge how important this was, and we analysed films such as Quadrophenia and Sweet Sixteen to find this out, and uh, what was that there? <laughs> um, 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 in some ways we challenge youth convention as well, as our pr the youth downfall is not actually precipitated by the protagonist, but although this isn't shown, it's open to aberrant decoding, so the audience can infer what they want from that. Um, we looked at horror first, and uh, one of the one of the most in one of the conventions from that was um, the point of view shot, and uh, we incorporate this in our in our trailer as well, and. Um, the cinematic underscores as well to sustain tension. We uh, illustrated this through the sound we added on. And as part of thriller, we looked at the girl with the dragon tattoo. This is, you know, one of the archetypal thrillers. And uh, fast paced editing and uh, an escalation in di diegetic and non diegetic sound were vital conventions, and we chose to incorporate this as well. Um, as for narrative theories, probably the most important was Todorov, as this is imperative in uh, youth culture, and uh, because the equilibrium and the youth downfall, perhaps the, you know, the foundation of all youth film. So um, we've shown this through as the kids get inca incarcerated by the antagonist, who's a uh, player, but she's nameless. And um, then this puts the antagonist into action and acts as a catalyst. So then he has to try and regain the equilibrium. Um, Bath's Enigma code was used to induce a sense of mystery and adrenaline. And uh, we illustrated this by making sure that we didn't con reveal too much of the narrative. So making sure that there was some ambiguity regarding the ending and so on. Um, and also elements of Eisenstein's mon montage theory, which uh, manifest particularly during the end, as um, the antagonist is trying to regain the equilibrium and the cross-cutting emerges, and then the clear juxtaposition between the protagonist and antagonist emerges here as well. And this conveys the urgency of the protagonist to regain the equilibrium. Okay. Um, one of the conventions was an establishment shot, which is the base of within almost all genres. And uh, we used it to identify the youth setting in which the film is predominantly set. Um, as for production companies, it's the same universally you know, conventional. And uh, we wanted to inherit audiences from certain production companies like Lionscape, who aren't a major, but they're a minor. And the uh, text narrative, we use this as an alternative to. Um, voice narrative, um, as we felt that we could now add more emphasis on the sound rather than the, just the dialogue. Um, as for mise-en-scene, we used 
clothing particularly, just one of the biggest indicators of youth within the film. And um, also the, the school environment in which it's in. So the audience can immediately identify that it's a youth environment and pick up from those conventions. And then the stock characters, so we have the protagonist, who's almost indispensable, the most probably the most important character. And um, he helps delineate the Todoros theory of the equilibrium, as of course he reacts to the to the disequilibrium and tries to regain it. And um of the <laughs> the antagonist who um is enigmatic and uh, she creates a contrast to the antagonist. And um, there's, I forgot that one, but there's the Femi Fatal, no, the um, Femi Fatal as well. Okay. So, this question is mainly concerned with synergy and uh, we made sure to, we illustrate this particularly through the social media, which we have embedded in the post of the trailer and uh, the website. And uh, this creates conversions, which of course enhances the audience's involvement in the film. Um, we use web posting services such as Weebly and Wix, we're starting with Weebly, which is the main source of convergence, which has multimedia all on one platform, so it makes it more accessible to the consumer. Um, Wix was used mainly to exhibit the website as a form of exhibition, and uh, this helps the distribution and construction of it as well. Um, in terms of synergy, this was illustrated through iconography, semiotics, which was shown in all of the youth, shown in the trailer, the poster, and the website, um, particularly through the colour scheme on the titles and the font, as they resemble it, create some iconography, and uh, the audience can identify with this and becomes recognisable. And um, also the slogans were pretty much the same. Um, the audience, you know, can identify and recognize this. Okay. Um, as for our feedback, we found out that the predominant good feedback came from uh, females, and this is partly the reason, the main reason why we um, done the test is to establish what our demographic was and where it was the most who it was most appealed to. And uh, so we've identified as females and most popular between 14 year olds as well, from a range of 11 to 16. And that's for our qualitative data. Um, it was the consensus was predominantly positive, and um, yeah, and also the constructive criticism uh, helped us. That may have been hard to take because um, it allows us to identify what parts are weak and what were strong points, and uh, how we can adapt on that. Um, in terms of research, okay. in terms of research and planning, uh, we used um, Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, and loads of different sources to um, find out about the youth and the conventions. Um, particularly through the first task we done, which was a uh, the Swede, it gave us an idea of narrative and time management and how we could apply this to creating the youth, our youth trailer. 
and different um, you know, technologies with the phones and cameras. Um, and of course for filming, we actually used the HD industry sound camera, which improved my familiarity with technology and uh, well, helped create the website, the trailer in a higher resolution, had different features. And um, Final Cut Pro, which I use for all the editing, which was a... Uh, And um, we used a green screen to uh, make it easier to edit. We knew that, you know, after we'd been um, taking the pictures that we need to cut out effectively and this would make it a lot easier. And then we looked at other websites as well for our actual exhibition website to help them um, understand the codes and conventions. And uh, one was making the video pop up straight away. <laughs> and social media, of course, which I can mention, like synergy, Excellent. conversion. And um, the blog style, which they incorporate, we chose to use this as well, because it's relatable to younger audiences and more accessible. And um, some qu quotes as well, reviews, which we used as well to add on authenticity to it. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you very much. Excellent. Okay. Um, we've just got a few questions. Um, Should I start this one? Go on. Yeah, why not? Okay, so we were, talk we were talking about your development in your production skills, and you were mentioning the HD camera and the final cut. But what I want to know is how your production skills have developed and aided your creativity. Okay. Well, um, how the cameras? How uh, the cameras or any other use of digital technology ha helped you progress well, your creativity in this project? Well, using industry standard cameras enables me to use imagination uh, in terms to interpret and uh, it has a wide variety of options and high resolution so of course you can you know illustrate your creativity to the full the max and use the final cut oh uh, yeah in terms of showing in terms of, in how 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 is that allowing you to create uh, to embed creativity um well final cut Placing. How is it? How is it allowing you to develop your creativity? Okay. Um, well, through editing, because it's a very new software, and um, it has lots of varieties in terms of how to cross cut, and you know, um, it was just the the very efficient way of editing, fast, time efficiently, and uh, to the best. Okay, um, I'm interested in your editing process then, and how you've used the editing process to help you with the forms and conventions of your product. So, I don't know, um, how did you use the convention of sound in your product, and what effect or purpose are you going for? Uh, well, in terms of sound, we knew that uh, to stick to um, Bart's period, no, sorry, um, Eisenstein's period for montage, that sound would be an important part of that. And so we use incorporate epic music and quite um, fast paced music, particularly towards the end. Although initially it started off pretty slow, gradual, with horror, sinister music, which we got from horror conventions. And um, then it moved on to epic, fast paced music, which of course raised the adrenaline of the audience. Yep. And just one more point on that forms and conventions. Um, why set it in a school? Uh, to you know, to represent youth culture, because they are our central focus as well. And, um, oh, okay. okay, okay. So, you um, described very well about the convergence of your of your poster 
and the website into the tra into the trailer. What I and what I want to further expand on is, do you think that your trailer, it, what elements of your trailer have you embedded into the poster? Say we did it the way around, but what have you drawn from the poster that you've embedded there? So what have you drawn from the film trailer that you've embedded in the poster? Uh, social media sources. Okay. As well, which we incorporate on both. Um, we've used the, the colour scheme, which although the yeah, and also the mise en scène, the clothing as well, in terms of the uniforms and the we took that from the film and then put that on the poster to clearly denote youth culture, the representation and iconography. Okay, just one little point for me. Um so you you spoke you spoke to us about the significance of the audience feedback. I just wondered how you collected your data. Uh, well we first created it on PowerPoint. I mean the, on Microsoft Word, sorry. And uh, we set out some quantit quantitative and qualitative data questions for our, uh, for our students. Give me an example of one of the questions. Um, how, far would you, how far would you rate the movie out of five stars? Okay. And um, I think, well, it goes on there. But, um, you know, from our feedback, we could tell, you know, what aspects of what what demographic it was most effective with. Okay. I'm done as well. Thank you, Derek. Thank you, Derek.